Genji versus FlyQuest. This is the best team that North America has had at World. Period. This is the closest to the world's level since Cloud9 took on a Freak of Freak 2018. If you remember back then, we predicted a win. And I'm going to tell you why FlyQuest has a chance, and not just a chance, but a, ch a real ability to shock the world today by playing Gen G. And we're going to go over why, what, what they can look for, the strategies that they can try to get, and, and go into in-depth what will make winning conditions for FlyQuest in this game. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables to, to talk about. Gen G is insanely good, right? They've got best in slot four out of five spots on the map. But FlyQuest, they got me believing. So I think we can do this. So I want to go over how and why and talk about the type of picks that I'm looking for FlyQuest to make, how they got this far, and why Gen G should be more worried than people are thinking about. All right, so breaking down the game. First, we have to talk about all the positions, all the players involved in it. Genji, rich history, has been touted the best team in the world for over the past two years, and yet only has one MSI title to show for it. I say only one title. That is still an international title. This team is serious business. We're talking about maybe the best player in the world at mid and at jungle, maybe the best in slot bot lane in the tournament, this team, this team is going to be a lot to handle. But there's a lot of things going for FlyQuest, all right? For one, Keen in the top lane has not made it past the quarterfinals at Worlds. In fact, both times that he's made it to quarterfinals, he has lost. And both times, they were expected to win. He was on that Afrika Freaks team that lost to Cloud9. So I'm looking for this 1-10 to 10 roller coaster of Keen to, to show up. This is a potential curveball that we can look at to exploit if you're a North American fan. Keen has finished in all 10 spots in the LCK. First place, 10th place, and everything in between. But he has not won in quarterfinals. and He has lost to North America. Lots of pressure on Keen. Jungle, we have the MVPs, right? We have Canyon, and we've got Inspired. Advantage Canyon, he's the best in, in the world to do it. He's doing it at a level that's higher than anyone else can, can claim to do it. This is got going to be a significant advantage for Gen G. Mid lane, former teammates, Quad was a protege of Chovy and learned everything that he learned and came up through the game, but also saw some of his failures. We're going to talk about Chovy's weakness. And specifically, even though this could be the biggest gap in the entire game, Chovy has historically had an issue with over prioritizing his own gold late in the game we've seen teams set traps for him in the top lane and basically knowing that he would go teleport to a wave that was fairly inconsequential towards the end game macro they once just set up a bush here and killed him on the teleport another time said okay we know you're going to do it we're just going to set up in this bush you're going to kill it and start walking through your jungle and they assassinate him there chovy learns a lot every single game he finds something that he wants to do a little bit better so maybe he eradicates some of that behavior especially against FlyQuest who has proven that they are willing to play exploitative strategies they took they took team liquid who had been playing the highest level of tempo league of legends that north america has ever seen they were taking the lpl clock and bringing it to our region and in the spring they had this issue where, what, what do we do next? We have this 1.4 to 2.5k gold lead every single game. What do we do with it? They were trying to go a little bit too standard stock play, try to do it by, you know, dot every I, cross every T. And the thing is, once you slow down, you allow the other team to start exploiting you. And Team Liquid realized that they could keep putting the pedal to the metal. Well, FlyQuest came up with the same response that T1 has done to all the LPL teams, which is saying... Okay, come at me. I dare you. I know that you're going to make the first move, so I can just sit in Counter-Strike formation all game long and deny you the ability to make any plays. And as long as you don't make that first or second play of the game that sets off the snowball, we're going to be fine. We're going to aim to teamfight you and to try to outscale you. FlyQuest models their game after Gen.G. 
right? They have spoken openly about it. If you got a chance to watch the hype video, they talk about it there. They want to be like Gen G, and there's a couple of reasons why it fits for them. This dyna dynamic, wonky top laner that can do seemingly everything. Uh, they've got the best player. Well, let me get to this in a second. Let me finish with bot lane. You've got these flexible bot laners that are showing a lot of promise early on in their careers. Lehems is no longer close to being a rookie. Pays is one year removed from his rookie year. Masu and Bus Busio have both won rookie of the split. Now this team with the perennial all pro top laner, the MVP jungler, two rookie of the years on the bot lane, they come together and say, this is our best player and we're going to play through him. But he has the unenviable task of playing against Chovy, who might be the best player in the entire world, not just at that position, but in the entire game. So how are they going to swing this? I'm expecting a lot of roaming champions from support. Champions like Nunu might come back again from FlyQuest that are going to try to swing this matchup as much as possible. Because what we haven't seen is someone willing to take Chovy down a notch and say, hey, we're going to try to tax you 10 to 20 CS and see if you're the same champion. Will you panic and will you revert to your old habits of recall, spin, teleport, and die? And if we can create this as FlyQuest, then we have a chance. There's a few other things going for us for this game. For one, two weeks. It's been two weeks since Genji has played a meaningful game. Sure, they've had plenty of time to cook. Sometimes you can overcook. Sometimes you burn what's in the pot by cooking a little bit too much. It's been two weeks since they've played. So this can be a big advantage for FlyQuest. They have that much more experience in this tournament playing, although this will be the first event in Paris. Next, it's Sunday. If you're Gen G, you don't have the luxury of skipping watching any of the matchups, especially the one that happened yesterday, right? Those of you who joined us to watch T1 versus Top Esports, there was a lot to break down about how T1 approached the game, and they basically did the same thing that FlyQuest did to Team Liquid, and it's the same thing that T1 has done to Chinese teams over and over and over. Come get me, I will outscale you. I will out team fight you. I will force you into a dynamic macro situation that we know better than you. And we're going to outperform you in those spots. If you're Gen G, you're watching yesterday's game that played on Saturday. The entire world is watching that game. You have to care because you know that that's your opponent. You know that you're, you know that you're playing FlyQuest on Sunday, but you feel like you're going to play T1 next week. So how do you watch that game without having a significant amount of your thought train trying to process what T1 is doing? FlyQuest, on the other hand, other hand, has the liberty of skipping it entirely. There is no pressure on them at all. They just get to do the best that they can against Gen G. And because nothing matters next week, next week does not exist. Everyone thinks we're going to lose. So why would we spend any amount of time thinking about T1 and the future? We have our opponents to think about right now. So the fact that T1 was going to be a distraction, the fact that it's been two weeks since Gen G has played, and this game is being played on Sunday, that gives us the most amount of time for FlyQuest rookies to settle in. It gives the most amount of time for them to pre prepare their meta. It gives them the extra day of practice that they need because they ended last week. They, everything works in their favor. Now, not just that. Let's talk about the meta. This AD anti-dive meta. This is where, we're, where it seems to be training, where we might get a lot of Orianna type picks that are saying, hey, I want to shield my front line. I want to have someone in the front that can be that vacuum. I don't know that Chovy wants to play Orianna. I'm pretty sure he wants to play Yone into Orianna. And then he wants to take champions and express his skill over quad, especially at least the first game. He wants to show his dominance, show this is why this guy was my backup. He does not deserve to be on the same stage as me you can potentially attack that hubris, which is why I'm, I'm expecting this to be a goal for this game and to see so much mid-dive. I'm talking Zach, I'm talking Nunu, and I'm talking about something alpha in the jungle that will absolutely just play through mid and say, hey, we're just going to pass through mid and we're just going to do basically four camps and rinse and rotate like this. And Inspired has shown that he is willing to do this. FlyQuest is playing at the best level that NA has played. T1 
Team Liquid probably got there first. In fact, they did. They definitely did. But it forced FlyQuest to evolve. And it forced FlyQuest to actually adapt and play the same way that you would have to play if you were going to beat a Chinese team. I think FlyQuest is actually in a really good position in this metagame as the best team that NA has ever produced with an MVP and a guy that is diagnosing the game at a level that I can't even describe to you guys right now. We've, we've spoken about it on the, on the channel. If the first world champions were playing at like a 2000 ELO, you can expect this number to sort of go up by 100 points every year, more or less. And it starts slowing down as people add more to their game and there's less flex, but this hasn't happened. It doesn't go up that quickly, right? And if everyone's playing at about 2,500 right now, using Chess ELO as a, as a guide, Inspired is downloading his opponents at this level and thinking about what is the next step? How can we exploit? How can we beat? If they are able to do that, you have a chance of seeing them outthink their opponents today. Now, that gives another reason, another lens to look at the roster. We're talking about Rookie of the Years down here, Busio and Masu. They might be feeling all the pressure in the world. We know that Pays can already deliver under pressure. But the best thing for them is to play this anti-dive supportive meta. Something like Ash, maybe even Ziggs plus Rome. One of these champions that allows your support to get out onto the map and try to influence this matchup right here. Because this team with a perennial All-Pro who has been to the World Finals, something Keane has not come close to doing, an M multi-split, multi-league MVP in the jungle, the two Rookie of the Years, their best player is Quad. They say, we play through Quad. This is the perfect metagame for FlyQuest. So check off all the boxes. This is the best situation that NA could ever have. And this is not from a point of hopium. This is just diagnostic and insight. That said, you're playing against a monster in the mid lane. You're playing against a monster in the jungle. These guys, it is no joke what they do to everyone else in the world. Pays 28 kills in the MSI finals. Chovy with the highest KDA that has ever been recorded in any league of any split ever. A record that will never be touched again. These guys are seriously talented. So if you're FlyQuest, I think you go in and you say, we're expecting to win some. We're expecting to win one off of just tilting Chovy. Then I want to win one off of them trying to over-index their adjustment. But once you get two wins, can you actually grab a bull by the horns and steer him the way you need to? Because this is when you're going to get killer Chovy, killer Canyon, killer Pays. They're all going to come out. And you better believe that Keen is going to want to prove it to his teammates as well. He doesn't want to be that guy that lets them down, that gets knocked out in the quarterfinals again. You had better feel that he has the most pressure on his team. The rest of the guys have done it. He hasn't. So I'm super pumped, guys. I think it's time to break it down. Let's go check out the game. All right, so here we go. We're picking up on the draft. We see Jinx. We've been speaking about Jinx as that sort of trump card if we do get into scaling versus scaling, which both of these teams should be diagnosing each other as. FlyQuest has said we want to model ourselves after Gen G. That means we want to be able to outscale. We want to play through mid. We want to play inside out. And we want to build on team fight. Well, if they want to build team fight to team fight, this is the best pick. This Jinx right here saying, hey, let's let's battle with Jinx and we're going to go front to back and we're going to play for resets. We've got Rumble up in the top. We've got Playmakers right here. Rumble Ultimate allows you to go and find that first kill and telling telling the team like, hey, we're going to play through Pays this game and saying, hey, we, we can take these big fights. The problem is Ari's been a little bit weak. Now, if there's anyone that I trust to do it in the tournament, it's going to be it's going to be a, a Chovy playing Ari. But we see some adaptations here. FlyQuest playing Galio into Rumble. Again, something Bwipo has already shown a very high level of mastery on. Xin Zhao, which pairs beautifully with the Seraphine. Seraphine also being flexed into mid lane. Let's talk about how strong... You guys want to talk about all the strategies that are coming up again? What's the... Uh, Let's talk about all the advantages that they've built for themselves in draft. You have Seraphine for the ultimate endgame scaling. 
Galio to make sure that nothing explodes on your team, that you're able to play front to back. You've got Xin Zhao to take that early game and say, hey, we want to scale through our side lanes. We're going to allow this uh, Xin Zhao pick to build the early game. Sometimes you've seen FlyQuest play Kalista in the bot lane and say, let's win through Kalista early and use that as our conduit to get to later in the game. But the other choice is to play it with your jungler and say, hey, we'd like to have a super active jungler and play for that. Xin Zhao is that, to play for the most aggressive early game situation. Not only that, but he has multiple forms of crowd control that help himself and Galio set up and combine with each other for kills. It also allows him to dash at long range to set up Seraphine. So you have a lot of play in this in this draft i absolutely love it from FlyQuest. it's what we were talking about as far as what sort of wrinkles they can bring into the format to try to get something for themselves that seraphine could have been support and i believe that in response to some supports we may have even ended up with seraphine going through the bot lane and just saying like like we mentioned in the pregame top of mind issues We mentioned that we want to play supportive through the bot lane. We want to take the responsibility off of our rookies. Yeah, they're great. They're rookie of the year. All right. They're, they were fantastic. They are not on the level of pays and heads. So we want to give them supportive picks. Ash is exactly that. I'm super excited that we got that. Ash Seraphine is a known quantity. It's a strong lane. I'm excited for the rest of this fight. Ari's going to have a really tough time versus the range here. Right. Seraphine Ash. It's going to be very difficult to play Ari. She may end up going for a flank position. Expect Galio to be a big hoss in this game. Just get get in the way of all the fighting. Play front to back. If you're Gen G, we're going to see Rumble and Skarner playing in that front to back and saying, okay, if you want to play front to back, we've got Jinx and we'll just battle through you. Uh, it's going to be a matter of whether or not we connect. All right, let's look for, for invade paths. Whippo saying, I'll work and harass. Ends up getting one for himself. One CS is enough, is enough to stop sun, some paths for the Skarner from hitting level 3. I expect Skarner here. We'll see if he goes over to the other side and picks up the other Gromp or if he goes to his Krugs. Now it is a lane swap. Ash in a lane swap is the most dominant champion because he has the most kill threat. And it looks like based on the early aggro, they've tried to set this up. They are not going for CS. I love this. Don't play for CS. Play for net lead. Once you zone the rumble off completely and show that you're willing to play for complete net lead, then once he's gone, you can start stacking the wave and pushing it in. Force the rumble out of that situation. We'll see if they adapt to that. So now rumble's probably going to come over and and leech some of this mid lane experience and then try to set up maybe for a three or four man dive in the bot lane. Uh, or he stays here. They send Ari down, but most likely they want to keep Chovy ahead because this is the matchup that they care about. They want Chovy to make sure that they're winning all night long. Uh, other option is to wait it out, see how long the push goes, and then just come back. I love the ward here, so they have perfect information. They get Ash to level three. Alistar is about to hit. He goes over and protects the Galio on the bot side. Now you have Ash versus Rumble, three versus one. You can actually keep this position. And especially with this ward right here, you see two out of the three paths that Leona can tag. In fact, this and this are the only two ways that Leona can approach to top lane without seeing it. If they have the advanced scouts that were able to mark that, then we'll see whether or not that becomes an effect. But boom, Lahens gets spotted. Ash pings. Sorry, they ping onto Ash. And now Ash will just back off. This is a stacked wave. It's only a level three rumble. Unfortunately, she hasn't really gotten anything for herself. So you're wondering whether or not they could have done more. But you see, Zinja's already pathing in the direction. Alistar's coming to answer the play. Now you have Galio versus Jinx. This is going to be Jinx favorite, although Galio has the heavy all in. But there's just no room to do it under the tower here, even with the aftershock. Love seeing the adaptations early, guys. Alistar in the draft being used as a flex, right? So you could flex Seraphine into mid. Alistar is a known counterpick to Leona, not just good in the laning phase, but also good through the rest. And once you're in level three, I expect them to try to reset their lanes when they get a chance. Now, they don't want to have to play this, right? They don't want to have to play the 3v3 of Canyon Pays Lehens versus Busio Maso inspired. They want to put their as many resources as possible into quad and against Chovy. 
the side of Gen G. And I think part of the hope is that if you're diving in... So are they going to keep this for a while? Or when are they going to go back is my big question. Maybe Whippo says, I can do more with less gold than Keen can. And so they might try to keep this. Because remember, no matter what, you still have tank stats and spells for the Galio here. He'll be able to sustain in many different situations, whereas Rumble needs to have some amount of gold. Levels, much more important. Level 11 being that huge spike where they can basically take any fight. Oh, slight mis misplay there by Buipo. Good job uh, to fight for the minions, but you actually want to stay in range for a moment for Leona to get the attack to make sure that she draws the aggro. That slow that goes along with it, if you walk away right away, Leona doesn't actually pick anything up. Basu's getting big here. Even after catching this wave, Whipple is still going to have about a half a level XP lead over that of Keen. Exactly, and, and Whipple here, you know, we'll see if he wants We're to up gold and experience here. Absolutely love the swaps. We talk about this a lot. Make sure you guys follow the channel if you haven't yet. We talk about the high tempo, macro oriented pressure game that you can create more gold in the game by sharing experience. Uh, that'll be, we'll do that in another video. There's no time to go over it now, but love watching FlyQuest, rotating between lanes, moving people constantly. To the best position. If they feel that they outscale you, they're not going to fight you early. They're just going to sit down, one plate for one plate. Seraphine's back first to mid. They're moving Jinx to mid and Ari to bot lane. Now, is this because Ari was closer to the wave and she could pick it up? And are they going to keep it here for long? Right? You see this wave here. You send the Ari over. She's got more flexibility. And uh, this is an adaptation that we that we speak about a lot with the Void Grubs being one of the most important avenues towards snowballing. When you do that, you want to send your solo laner to bot lane who has teleport. Now, in this situation, Ari does not. So it means that they're just going for one for themselves, and then they're resetting. They're using this time to get Jinx an extra half wave in mid, and Ari able to get the wave down in bot lane. So they're saying, you know what? We don't want to fight for this. We don't want to play against Ash, Seraphine, Alistar at this stage in the game. So we'll come, just make a quick rotation. You bring Jinx over to mid lane in case a fight breaks out. You pay, put Ari down, who's the most capable on your team in that long lane and you have rumble in position to come help if there's if there's fighting but mostly this is about keeping rumble and jinx in a safer position i expect ari and jinx to come switch back soon one of the ways that FlyQuest will need to take advantage of of this draft if they're going to outscale is to get some amount of dragons so that later in the game they can threaten d3 Baron, right? So you you want to threaten whether or not you can get to Soul or Baron. You never choose this, right? You always choose Baron. But having the option to say, hey, we're okay with trading if we if it comes up that we get Soul and we're not ready to fight you, but we get Soul, then that would be great as well. Obviously, the second best prize and these Korean teams have shown that they are more than capable to just snowball a game under the hand of Baron buff. So I want to see whether or not they ever make that choice i think three dragons is not really a win condition for this for this series in particular because giving up the baron versus t1 or at this point gen g uh it's it's usually a doom sentence that said unless you can exploit this right here we've seen chovy do it all right we've called it out we've seen it happen we've called it live chovy will teleport back if he has teleport he will not he has shown the propensity to teleport back to a minion wave to try to pick up an extra wave before recalling or saying i want to push this out a certain amount before i rejoin my team all it takes is a baron defense like if enemy team gets baron you just come straight over here with your sweepers and you hide in that ward in that in that bush FlyQuest have brought their bot lane down, and because of that Ash, they have Pryo, along with the Xin Zhao, FlyQuest are wisely leveraged... And see if you can punish that movement, if it comes up, if you can get a Dragon Soul, three people on the Soul, two people to trap Chovy, then you can turn that and leverage that into a win. But if they get if they get a Baron and they have five members on it, look out. Also worth noting, Busio now hitting level six on the Alistar, as the Hens only just hit level five on the Leona. All right, Alistar is six. Leona is still level five. Rumble is behind significantly, almost a whole level down on the Galio. He's picking some of that up at the turret. But Galio's going to zone him out. They did catch some amount of this pressure. He's going for a little bit of an engage. He's using that kit, guys. That kit is so good specifically into rumble because you don't mind being melee and running away because you've got that big purple shield to get you out of those spots 
more and more and more. The longer you get into the game without there being that major... Xin Zhao was the glue that held everything together. Now, what is going to be his purpose later in the game? Is is he just going to be an ult bot that's meant to send Skarner away from his team to peel? Or is it meant to go and try to dive the Jinx, knock her into the team? Uh, very difficult to create that, obviously. But there should be a lot of patience. I expect this to be a bruiser Zin Zhao build. Uh, we're trying to get him to buy some space so that you can pivot. Seraphine needs a pivot. Right now you've got one, two, three. That you can set up a vanguard strategy, or you can even go and say, I've got my two vanguards, my two carries hiding behind them, and I have Galio that's able to jump onto either one. Right? And that formation means that you can play for a long time, right? Especially as Alistar in front. Neither of these are true tanks. Galio might have to be that one that provides that middle spot. You might have to go into Vanguard, Vanguard with true tank to be your front line here, and then you put your carries behind. This is another fo formation that works for them. And then Galio can say, hey, if you ever try to like dive or flank from one side, I can ult myself back into position. But it's going to be tricky to play out. They trust themselves for this. There's a lot of formations that we've seen them use in the fights and the big question whether or not FlyQuest will have the class to beat Gen.G will be whether or not they can win this sort of line of scrimmage standoff where one team is giving the river one team is giving the mid lane and gosh and are they willing and able to to win a position and be super patient like that bait in a fight see whether or not they can get them to overcommit especially a leonel all right here we go first big damage rumble alt really nicely done they bait in the fight they kill trovi there's one there's the seraphine ultimate they're gonna wipe this fight guys ash means that you never lose the rest of the fight black quest takes it Game's not over. This is a snowball point. It should be over if you play well, especially with the team that scales as well as the team that they have drafted for themselves. They still have to do it though, okay? This is still, you still have to be high tempo. You can't just sit back and say, all right, let's do the normal things because these rosters have shown the ability to improvise and to come up with creative plays. So take a deep breath. Hopefully their shot caller, I believe inspired, is gonna be the one in this position that says, all right, good job guys, job's not done. We've got more to do. Trophy goes a little bit. This was all a bait. Guys, this is all a bait. This is FlyQuest style. You move forward with the jungler and the tank. You say, hey, look, we're taking a little bit too much space. Do you want to come and engage on us? You invite the engage and then you collapse. This has been their MO. This is why we think that they are going to be capable of winning. And I love watching Nuke Duck right now. When you are a coach, guys, when you're a coach or a captain, you are constantly diagnosing. At no moment do you stop to think how much of a success you are or how successful something you did was. You just constantly think about, okay, what's next? Okay, what's next? We won, all right, what's the next opening? Where do I want my team to go? Because when it comes to this game, if you win, you can still go to your team and say, we did good. Hold your heads high, give yourselves a pat on the back. We got more to do because you didn't take as much off of this situation as we could have. Right now, we're still talking about plates being on the table. Uh, with the three kill lead and the gold lead, they should have enough strength to move forward. We do have the cooldown build from Seraphine, which is what we expect every single time. I'm wondering if we're going to see Blackfire Torch or Leandries. Usually it's Leandries. Make sure you get a little bit of extra defensive capability and make sure that your damage does stick over time. Uh, and also it gives a little bit of that ramping damage. If you do get that big ultimate off, you want to make sure that that big Q on the other side, especially if it's double casted, is damage. See if she goes down that path or not. Xin Zhao, as expected, Sundered Sky. This is going to be Sundered Sky, and then we're talking about uh, Sterix Gauge, Black Cleaver type items. Probably not Cleaver this game because of the damage profile, um, but probably a Sterix Gauge coming out next. Double Tenacity. Hold on, Leona's going for a play here. This is this is pretty ant antsy. Lehens, this is super forced, guys. Zinja just knocked back Canyon. All right, hold it back, hold it back. There we go, there's the play. Make sure that the call that you make is the one that you want at the moment and you constantly, constantly revisit. Page flashes out, so now you say, okay, let's come back. Let's come back, we're doing good. We got that pick overstepped by Lehens. Alistar counters Leona for this exact reason. Let's go take the dragon, let's mark Page flash timer, all right? 1350 we've got fights until 1850 we're going to keep this on screen because this right here this is your window to to continue snowballing this game if you can get a kill onto jinx 
then that is your easiest way to to solidify your w here all right genji thought maybe we have a punch that we can take it's going to be very very difficult into this team for the rest of the way xin Zhao has the ability to block projectiles and has the sundered sky alistar has infinite peel Seraphine, Ash, super happy to play front to back. Nice shot by Quad there. See, you see that throwing the E backwards? Knowing that Leona's going to path onto the opposite side. Knowing that they had enough here, I, I would not have suspected that they had enough, but you know what? They had information that Rumble was top and Ari was bot, so they were good to make this play. And if you're a player, take a deep breath, right? If you can picture the revving up on a car, it's really easy to rev. And this is like your sweet spot. This is like where you go when you're trying to accelerate onto the highway or make make a pass in a in a potentially dangerous situation. You do not want to live up here. You can't live up here. Your body will burn out. You need to be able to go up and say, okay, now we come back down. What's next? And you go back into that study. You reset yourself to that baseline. Picture a tennis player after a point, wipe their face with a towel, twist their racket, play with the strings. All of that is to forget what already happened and just think about what's next. But first, you reset to your baseline and then you pull yourself back up and optimize your stress level. You want a little bit, a little bit of agitation, enough to show that you care and know that you care, but not so much that you overcare. The way that we expect might happen with this guy. If you're keen and you get held to a game where you're way under profile for your stats, you've died early, you haven't made it out of the quarterfinals, that's the guy that we might try to break over over time. We want to break Keen, get him to panic, make him the weak spot. I fully believe that we can get a free kill or two on Chovy. I think it's going to happen. We've already seen one happen. But Chovy has that beast inside of him that will just awaken to a whole nother level, right? And and this is sort of like that boss that you gotta kill once, and then you think that when it comes back to life and you kill twice that you're done. You have to kill these guys three times. You have to win three games. The job is not done. Even if you win one game, you have not accomplished anything yet. Continue to play well. All right, rumble all just for damage. Hold on, this is Masu in front. They have to burn up more flashes, all right? They reposition, they get a little bit over zealous good job by genji to get a full chunk of damage they are at 60 percent hp across the board and this is a seraphine on the on the spot of fly quest one of the things i love about seraphine and i expect that we might see even sona later if you go into these 60 percent versus 50 percent fights like they are right now seraphine's gonna take you and top you back off and you can last longer they secure themselves the rift heralds, which is crucial to help them unlock this mid tower. And critically, Keen is 300 experience, access to more gold. But they give up the mid turret. How much have you lost? Great play by Fly. We've just used more of our resources. We used our flashes. We're not going to go contest you for rift herald. We're going to take what you give us on the map, which is the mid turret. You're lucky if you turn that rift herald into a mid turret. The gold and the, and the experience that happens right now, we give you, give it to you. But the fact that we just got two outers in exchange for you making a play for Rift Herald is one of the other exploits that we've talked about versus these Korean teams. They have a heavy, heavy proclivity to go, go to the Void Pit because they expect that if they can get at least four of these Void Grubs, that they can just snowball for wins. They also think that if they can get Rift Herald, that they're basically cheating an extra wave of experience and gold to their team. If you can say, all right, we'll give you that. We know that you're going to over-index because that is your play. We come up with a response, which is don't contest at all. Don't even show anyone in the river like you're pretending to do it because that person, you have to protect them. Instead, go and say, we'll go and be strong in the southern quadrant. We'll be strong on the bot side of the map. We'll control this area. And while you go and take this, we'll say, okay, thank you, thank you. And we'll control this area now because of it. So 5-0, 3k gold lead is not the most. Chovy is still getting his gold. Pays is still getting his gold. The resources are still being funneled from the Korean team into the into the carries for this game. Keen, with level 11 and one item, honestly is going to do enough. And this is not going to be Zonia's, actually. I, I expected it to be Zonia's after the start that they had. Maybe this is going to be a Crypt Bloom. 
saying, hey, I'm a support this game. I don't have the gold to multiply. I'm basically an item down compared to my other teammates. I'm just going to be an ult, deal as much damage as I can, use crit boom. Boom, they got the funnel they wanted. Three-man ult from Seraphine. Inspired is still alive. Look at this. They bait the fight. I want Whippo to pull back now. Whippo needs to pull back. Now, you have to be careful. Do not give any kills to Paze. Hold on. This is what you have to be careful of. All right, now we have to be so alert to not give more. They're going to chase. We need to be really strong with our position. Okay, we just gave one, and we escaped. That was potential potentially too far we have to be really careful about that whippo i know that you want to take the most out of every situation and it's important that you get the most but the one thing that we can't have is this we don't care if chovy cleans up two kills this game what we care is if we get pays unlocking the reset and the attack speed steroid right move speed steroids if they get access to that, then they have the potential to get a pentakill. If they come close to that, then they are they are going to carry this game. That's what we have to be alert for. Nice job by Alistar. Beautiful position right there. And you see how Zinja is block, just blocking out the projectile damage. Now this right here, this is where I don't like it. From Whippo, the, I don't like this. This should have been back and just consolidate the kill onto, onto the rumble. You don't have position. You're not actually that strong uh, because Inspired is not really in this fight. Yes, you're plus a number, but he cannot rejoin. He's used all of his tools. When probability is high, like we said, this is a game that you'd expect a chess master, a grandmaster to finish. This is like being up a bishop and a pawn in a chess game. You do win from here, but you still have to whittle them away from their resources. You need to say, okay, I'm going to chip down, slowly gain a little bit more, gain better and better and better positions. Any moment that you slow down to not take a net beneficial position is a moment that you are giving potentially to them to step back in. Basu just missed a cannon. How is his mental going to be right now? There's no pressure on him. He doesn't need to do much, although they did give him... PD Kraken Slayer to carry the back end of fights. That is still going to deal a tremendous amount of damage. Missing out on a cannon might be the difference between an amplifier later or not. We saw Infinity Edge from this spot yesterday. I don't know if we'll see another one. Or if they just say, like, hey, this is what we need from you. We, we need the amplification of any sort. I might, I might expect to see Mortal Reminder and Runons say, hey, we're playing for max slow and spraying this as much as possible, but they do need to make sure that you're dealing enough damage. So it's kind of dicey. At some point, you do need to kill this Jinx. And if that's the case, then we, we might see more single target damage. All right, inside out macro. Deep ward, you see this? I'd like this to be a little bit further because you want it to cover that wall as well. But this is going to see most of the ways through mid lane that they could have. So I'm totally fine with that position. A little bit further is best. This is a leading team's prerogative. You see these control wards, you can place them on your side. Knowing that the enemy doesn't really have the opportunity to try to step forward especially since your mo what you're calling is your game plan your win condition is catching them overstepping so the battle for vision can be a huge part of that now one two three i love to see this a ward line saying we are controlling this much of the map make no mistake this doesn't end here you can always draw trapezoidal lines with your base to say hey this is what we cover reality with this turret still up they can still say this but absolutely, you can say this much turf is definitely ours. It's definitely safe. We can play ahead of this line and then come back and farm whenever we need to if there's nothing left to do, ensuring that we get that net positive. But they're going to try to sneak that forward. You can see the ward line right here, stepping up into enemy territory and saying that we can take a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Gen G is now going to take the seat that FlyQuest took against Team Liquid. Are they going to make a hasty positional play where they think that they are more ahead than they really are do they overcommit into us can we get jinx to freak out and just carry a fight all right whippo's in with galio they've got pays no flash he gets the knock up they get the chain all right we got the peel but pays can pays cannot rejoin this fight all right everyone should continue to move forward here we're gonna get one pick might get a little bit more all right careful not to go any more further whippo 
Good job. We get all the resources. We get cleanse. This right here, the fact that they were not able to get... The fact that we were not able to get the kill on Paze is pretty big, but we do get kill on Canyon, and Paze needs to go back to base, which means they're going to go back into this. Now, they don't have any but one of the ultimates, so Galio's going to have to take an interesting position. Expect Alistar to be the one that hides out on the side. You don't want to give any sight of where he is. Love these wards here. You can ward anywhere along this arc to keep it out of line of people that are wearing sweepers as they come into the Baron Pit, and... Be confident that the enemy team won't know that you saw them. All right, Busio is being marked here by Keen. He is doing a little bit of peeling. Hold on front to back. They're going to give up the Alistar to get the Baron. Yayo saying no nonsense. I'm just going to ult back to my team so we don't need to do anything else. Genji is going to get the Dragon off of this. And Busio going down means that also we get the mid turret going down. This feels like FlyQuest is giving up more than they needed to. But it was the, hey, this is the safest way to not throw the game. I don't want them to be thinking about this is the safest way to not throw. Because you have to win a whole series. And after that, you need to win another series. Because you're not here to just show how good you can compete against a Korean team. You want to win world championships. That's why you're here. So I want to make sure that we're not getting more of those spots. It's not just about give up Busia. It's okay to give one. But it did not seem like they were in a position where they needed to overcommit to that. They end up saying it doesn't really matter. It's not, not that big of a deal. He's got the Swifties. He'll be back on the map. They use proactive teleports to get to this position, but there is no wave. So they're over here. They've pushed inside out, pushing from mid to bot, but they gave up the prio now mid. Jinx is addressing this wave despite having no control over here. Galio is picking this wave up. It's going to match with this one that's spawning, right? So those are going to match right in front of this turret. And they have to hold this amount of time. They have to hold this amount of territory for themselves. They're going to give up top. Galio's going to push mid and threaten to ult on top of them in the bot side. Uh, they might give up on the other side. Rumble does have his ultimate. He is the only chance they have of defending this push. But the answer is going to come from Fly. Are we going to give anything? They may say we don't need to give anything to you. We can just take this, go reset, do the same thing on the top side. You see them pinging for this turret, which means that they're going to do the exact same play, which is Galio right here in the mid lane control this area the western quadrant and then you're going to push up through top control this area with galio having the threat of joining up over the top so really good tight macro from FlyQuest, saying we're going to take the maximum for this cash in on the thousand gold from that inner tier two turret and continue to build off of that use it ex accelerate snowball shop do it again you do not need to end the game right now, but if you can pick up both of these inner turrets, you will have an insurmountable gold lead from the position that you're in. Whipple gets the push in mid, he gets to rotate over. Pace picks up the pay, the or Jinx picks up the wave, and they redraw the line of scrimmage in mid. They were not able to get any deep ward here. Normally, you'd like to see this. These wards are no longer useful, so you'd like to see something right here. But I do like that they have two wards in the quadrant to come over. Galio's going to go and pick up the defense, but he does not have teleport. This is this is. Good job by Gen G saying we are going to threaten and not let you push hard. And this is why I'm talking about that you can't just say, hey, we'll give you something up for free because nothing is for free. You need to take the maximum every single time that you can. And if it's your turn to snowball, it's your turn to snowball. There's only seven seconds left on the Baron. It, this is the advantage they got. They opted to try to defend this one rather than push this one. They could have stayed and said, Ari, right, you can take this for free and we'll fight for this. They end up pulling back and saying, hey, we'd rather just keep you at the lowest amount of gold possible. And that speaks more towards what we discussed as a win condition, which is keep this guy the relative amount of one kill or 20 CS lower than he's used to being. Make him feel like he's a little bit behind the pace. He's used to having three items at 28 minutes in the game. How does he play when he only has two and a half? That's the big challenge. Does he does he go back into his tendencies? We just saw it right there that he went back into the bot lane. There was no threat of a catch that time, but maybe there could be. Maybe you can maybe you can manufacture that for yourself. Genji is going to give you nothing for free. You see that they have not left the 30th quartile, right? We talk about this like 30th, 40th, 50th. It's how much of a percent of the map are you trying to take for yourselves? When you're in a full defensive position, you basically can only go one beach or one half quartile ahead of your turrets. On the weak side of the map, you can send someone because 
you know that no one's here to threaten you, right? You can just send someone push up hard, try to make a opposing, an opposite and equal threat on the other side, and see if you can catch them making bad rotations. Because if they miss, you might just pocket a thousand gold for yourself. Four man defense versus five, one versus zero, that's going to be a winning situation unless they have baron which is why i wish flyquest had gone for a little bit more there try to do the same thing bait out the fight bait them to overcommit on the defense all right we're gonna have a split map here with soul and baron being on the table flyquest is gonna be happy with either honestly uh i don't think there's a well, hold on there's a teleport behind them they're going for the flank here on ari they're engaging on the Ari with the time. Oh, a little bit late. Chovy got out. All right, they might call off the play, but you have to be here. No, take the fight. Take the fight right here. No, all right, they're going to redraw their line of scrimmage. Uh, but that's 20 seconds before the dragon. So now you need to play for stalls because he just gave up two ultimates, two huge ones, right? This one, especially the Seraphine, especially is a massive one. They were not quite perfectly timed to get out of that situation. Hello, Merc Treads being the difference there. Ari has picked up the third item, so she is going to be a threat. This is going to be a full-out fight for mid-prio. By having mid-prio, you eliminate the offensive capacity of the other team. Now, are they just going to draw for a line of scrimmage here, saying this is our area, or are they going to commit to the dragon? They might just try to burn the dragon down, saying, hey, we've got enough. But this dragon gets pulled over to an awkward spot, saying, hey, we want the most forward position for a fight possible. That's an interesting step forward from Bwipo. His team does not have the cooldowns, but they do burn down the soul. So they're going to take the rest of the fight here. Just consolidate on Canyon. Don't worry about this. Just Ash can go. All right, redraw your line of scrimmage. Careful about the Jinx. There's nothing left. They got it. Now they can push up mid. This is going to be GG. Jinx is dead. Canyon's dead. You do have Chovy. Rumble does not have access to his, to his ultimate for wave clear. They have the mountain benefit. They stop the back. We've seen Ash stop backs before in the past. Did they know about that? It must have been a hawk shot. Uh, so that's enough time to get back. Hold on. Cannon. Keep the cannon alive. You see how Whippo's zoning out the rumble there? Very, very important. They step forward, ultimate forward. Now Seraphine's ultimate's back up, and you have the access to the rest of the fight. You have to be careful, though. You have to kill this Keen. You have to kill Rumble. Ignore the damage. Just go ahead and fight. Ignore the Leona. Just hit the turret. All right, game one. You do not overstep. All right, let yourself be happy. Congratulations, you won a game. The job is not done. I'll see you in game two.